Hi everyone, good morning and welcome to today's video. Welcome to a beautiful Sunday morning. It is pretty humid again, so, um, but that's okay. We are still gonna do our ride today. Unfortunately, as you know, Jason has a fractured clavicle, uh, so he is not going to be riding with me today. Um, so that's a bummer, but I'm doing something a little different with the video. I will be doing a about a 58 mile ride. And so what I'm gonna do is just talk a little bit about, kind of give you guys a recap of our Connecticut Grand Fondo, since we never really talked about the aftermath of that, uh, as well as a little update on Jason's condition. So let's get started on our ride. So, like I said, um, oops, let me just. So, if you're on a indoor trainer and you want something a little different, maybe something more realistic, uh, I got this idea because Jason is pretty much riding indoors for the time being. Uh, he is allowed to ride indoors now um, for a couple of days he was kind of out of commission waiting to hear from the doctor and also uh, hear from what the doctor has to say after his surgery um, and so he has his uh, post post op on Friday Let me just make sure post op on Friday with the doctor and the uh, doctor gave him an okay to uh, ride outdoors, or sorry, ride indoors. And so he's going to be doing a couple of these indoor rides until he, to maintain his fitness. So, uh, as you guys could see, there should be a gradient screen. Uh, sorry, the, you'll see a the gradient on the screen, um, and possibly the route itself. And so, if you're riding indoors. Um, you can go by that to kind of gauge like what kind of effort you want to do. I didn't uh, didn't want to include all the power data and so on because since you're riding with me, you'll be using your own power data. Or if you're not using power then you can just enjoy the scenery so what I'm doing right now is I'm going to do a one lap around my neighborhood and uh, this is just kind of a warm-up lap and this is what usually what Jason and I do when we start our ride uh, before the start of our ride is go around the neighborhood to warm up. So I was kind of quick on my intro there. Um, I'll give you guys an update of you know what our thoughts are have been for the past couple of weeks because since we didn't really you know we didn't really give you an update uh, 
Um, we haven't been really giving you an update, actually, of how we've been doing and what we've been doing and so on. So, as you know, Jason has a fractured clavicle, and if you didn't get to see that video of him explaining exactly what happened and how it happened, in fact, we actually just passed the road that he crashed in. Um, so if you didn't see that video, um, you'll see the link pop up on the top right-hand corner there. So he's going to be out of commission for several weeks, a couple of months, and so I'll be riding solo for the time being. So. I'll go and talk about what we've been doing after the Connecticut Grand Fondo and then just a little bit more about fueling since I think I pretty much I don't have it a hundred percent down but I think I've been pretty good with fueling force feeding myself is what I call it so that's kind of what you have to do okay left turn will be a couple left turns this Next left turn coming up. I have to make sure that I kind of take it easy the first few miles. So that I don't overshoot myself there will be a couple of climbs let me just okay we're good okay so there will be a couple of climbs um, later on in the ride probably mile 20 or so and uh, There are segmented climbs from Strava. The first attempt um, I'm going to try to attempt a PR on them. The first one is the Tabor Road Climb. And that's about two miles. And it ends in a... You get to the top and... You know, what goes up must come down.
Anyway, sorry. I just try to make sure, since I'm riding solo today, that I cover all my bases, since Jason isn't with me to check the rear. So yeah. Uh, Tabor Road Climb is the first segment that I will try to attempt a PR on. So it's a two mile segment. I can't remember exactly what the average grade is. I'll put it up on the screen right now. And the, my time before Again, I don't know, I don't remember, but there's a recon of the hill. And uh, there's this other segment that I didn't realize I got the QOM on. It's a very short segment, it's steep but short, it's 0.2 miles long. And uh, I got a, an email from Strava saying that I was dethroned. So I'll try to see if I can, depending on how my legs feel, my legs have been pretty trashed these past couple of days um, because on Tuesday, I did a two and a half mile run, and it's been a long time since I ran. And uh, so I thought maybe I would do a 30 minute run, which turned out to be two and a half miles long. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty slow. It was a pretty slow. Uh, pace I think I was going like 12 minute per mile <laughs> but you know I felt okay afterwards you know I did feel some soreness which is you know expected if you haven't done a particular workout and you're using different muscles to run than when you're riding and it's more of an impact, a full impact sport. So, because of that, I, uh, I was able to take, um, well, actually, let me pause here for a minute. I have a left turn to make, make sure that I have all my senses. It's clear. So yeah, when I was riding, uh, oh sorry, when I was running, the day after I was feeling some soreness and then so mind you, I did a, uh, a ride before that, like a one hour upper zone two ride before the run. So in triathlon terms, I guess I did a brick run and a lot of potholes over here coming up 
so yeah in tri triathlon terms i did a brick run and uh i did 45 actually not a one hour it's 45 minute ride and then a 30 minute run afterwards so took the day off the following day uh well actually i take that back <laughs> I, uh, I did some strength training, um, core exercises, arm exercises, and then and a little bit of single leg squats or uh, Bulgarian split squats. So I was, uh, my legs were pretty trashed after that. So I don't know. We'll see how I feel today. Oh, a nice breeze. You can see the uh, lake to my right here. That's Candlewood Lake. And uh, people are starting early. They're fishing and taking their boats. And this lake. If you watch my videos, uh, in the uh, in the past, uh, this lake is one of the largest lakes here in Connecticut. It's a man-made lake, and uh, Yeah, uh, it pretty much, most of our rides kind of revolve around that lake. Sometimes we stray away from it. So I think what I'm gonna do here is Yeah, so what I think I want to do here, guys, is I'm going to stop talking and I'll keep the camera on because in less than a mile is that segment that I'm going to try to PR, I don't know, we'll see. And I'm not really feeling it today.
Oh dear. Every time I see a deer, I say, oh dear. Okay. So that climb's coming up. I'm not sure if I start it. Up there on the right. I got that one. I didn't think I did it. Oh. So this right turn is super sketchy. Clip there. I hate clipping and unclipping, or unclipping and clipping in. So, a Strava friend of mine who lives in the same town, not too far. I guess from where I live, had that QOM, and yeah, that was a good test to to see if my legs had it today. It looks like, or it seems as though. I uh, got it back, or 
I don't have, doesn't feel as tired. I was uh, up to even Friday, I was feeling, my legs were feeling really tired still. So the field right here, this open field, is the federal penitentiary. Uh, a low, uh, debris. So it's a low uh, security prison, more for like white collar crimes. Martha Stewart was there. Uh, that Real Housewives lady, I think her name, her last name was Judas. I don't watch the show, but the local paper made a big deal about it. So, whew. You could see the sign. Federal Correctional Institution. Uh, yeah, it looks like that truck up ahead has a bunch of jet skis in tow. People are heading over to, I believe, Squan's Pond, which I will be stopping at to refuel. So at this point, guys, I'm going to turn the camera off and you will be uh, I'll turn it on later because I don't want this video to be Too long. I'd like to keep it within the one hour in case you're doing a one hour ride on the indoor trainer. Okay. Well, you guys just missed. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Just missed me running through a couple of red lights. Yikes. So this is all downhill and then... Again, to the right here, I'm on the other side of Candlewood Lake now. really pretty. Yeah, that's the problem with riding on the shoulder is there's a lot of obstacles. So I've always, okay, so like there's this lady here who's running, so I'm gonna move over and there's also debris.
once in a while I'll see a group of cyclists coming the opposite direction. I know they're allowing group rides now, so although I don't really know what the limit is, I mean, it's kind of counterintuitive if you are riding in the group, but you still have to be six feet apart from one another because, I don't know, I just don't think that you're maximizing your, your drafting. And not that I... I am for a draft. I mean, this is coming from someone who doesn't ride in group rides. I would like to. I like the group rides on Zwift. You know, and I see the benefit of riding in groups because you kind of want to keep the, the pace, hold each other accountable for it. So this is right now uh, zero grade. So <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> I actually, on my, I, I changed my screen on my Wahoo instead of showing my, <clears throat> my power like my, what do they call it? Relative power or <clears throat> my actual power, you know, that very second, instead of showing that, because what I found is that if you did your actual power, it's just like all over the place. Cause you know, it changes based on the terrain, the grade, so, you know, if you go over a pothole, uh, your power might go from zero to 150 or something. So I found that switching it to average, five second average is a little smoother. So, Squan's Pond is up ahead. So when I do the average power for five second average power, um, I find that it almost is like um, kind of like riding on the bike erg where the power is a lot smoother on the bike erg. Here we are, Spawn's Pond. Looks like I'm gonna stop here and just shake my legs, get off the saddle. And this is what I do typically when we both, uh, Jason and I both do this, when we are um, riding is we stop. Right, so I'm gonna stop here, guys. So, um, just so you know, I have 
uh, fueling wise, I have three bottles. Um, two are these hard or soft, well, not hard, but yeah, hard, um, to your normal water bottle that you carry on the bottle cage. So I have two water bottles. They're totally different. And I also have a soft flask, which I showed you last time, um, a couple of rides ago, and these seem to help. So I have a total of three bottles of water and a soft flask is great because you can actually roll it up and store it and it weighs like nothing. So it's not an added weight to your bike. I'm actually pretty weighed down right now because I have three bottles, full bottles and food. So I'm going to stop here. And if we are, let's see, almost an hour into our ride, um, for me at least. So you guys can, um, if you want, get use the bathroom, get something to f fuel yourselves. Uh, hydrate and then you can hit the pause button and then unpause it when you're ready all right we're back at it again it was eight o'clock in the morning So the next climb that I will be attempting a PR on is Leech Hollow Road. So it'll be uh, slightly uphill from here past the uh, Squans Pond. Swans Pond, by the way, is still part of Candlewood Lake. So I actually don't like it <laughs> because, you know, it's since it's shaded, it's and you're riding, it gets pretty cold. But right now it's nice. You get a nice reprieve from the sun. Although it's really not that super hot right now. It's actually a nice temperature. Uh, it will be pretty humid later, I think. Uh, we've been getting these like thunderstorms um, or tropical storms. And with high winds and just like torrential downpour which is not good here in Connecticut we typically get those uh, kind of slow trickling rainfall like you would get in the rainforest but those storms produce like result to like flash floods and so the water doesn't get enough uh, time to get absorbed in the soil uh, for drinking water. And what it ends up doing is it just goes down the drain out into the ocean. So, I mean, yes, we get some rain, the rainfall, but it's not enough for it to actually get absorbed into the soil. And it's been kind of like that for the past couple of years. I mean, we get like rainfall, but seldom we get more of, uh, you know, the flash flood warnings after these storms. So I gather I have a little bit of a headwind right now, 
Again, I'm not going to complain because it's pretty nice. Kind of helps cool me. That's the good thing about riding outdoors is you get this natural cooling effect from the breeze and your sweat. And I can't remember who said this, but in one of those cycling YouTube videos, they were, uh, I think it was Francis Cade, who was doing a double Everest thing. And he had all these fans blowing at him. And uh, I guess he knows like someone who's in the field of aerodynamic engineering. And they pretty much said like, yeah, <laughs> All those, fa you need like 20 fans to really cool yourself if you're riding indoors. Unless you have like, if you're, you know, it might be helpful if you have like air conditioning to help cool you down. Yeah, so we're climbing, slowly climbing um, up along uh, the side of uh, this little hill that separates us from the other side of Canwood Lake. So anyway, <laughs> I've been kind of talking about random things here. Uh, what happened after the Connecticut Grand Fondo? Um, well, we obviously did an active recovery week, uh, kept our ride to, our long ride to two hours. And we did mostly uh, zone two rides during the week on Zwift, just so that, you know, we're keeping our legs moving and so on. And then after that, we sort of jumped into doing uh, I think four hours. And you know, that's the great thing about the training plan, having it, you know, following a training plan is you really build your fitness. And it's hard. Uh, the last two weeks, I think it was uh, the, the peak phase of the training. Oh, it was so hard. I didn't think I could make it, um, but somehow I managed to. Now, it actually fell at the perfect timing because everything closed down. And so I'm a teacher and they closed the schools. So, I mean, I still had lessons that I was doing with the kids.
but I didn't have to get up as early. And the energy that you expend just, uh, you know, it's almost like I say to people that teaching is like, oh, biker, it's like a performance. Hello. You know, it's like you have to perform every time. And that's, it's like five days a week, seven to eight hours a day you're performing in front of middle schoolers. I teach middle school science. So with uh, all the sclo closings, everything and lockdown, um, that was sort of a godsend in terms of training because you know, I, I was able to recover from a lot of those high intensity workouts. I mean, I'm like the volume increase and the intensity increase. And it's like, if I had to go into work, it would be like, it'd be really hard. So, All right, so uh, anyway, so that was that was I'm kind of jumping all over the place, sorry. But that was the last week of our I mean, obviously we tapered, but it was hard. And so after the training, we were so excited. At least I was, because that meant I didn't have to worry about making sure I was eating enough before the workouts, like preparing what to eat the week before. So I know, okay, like, am I gonna be fueling enough for my intense effort, my intense week? So I didn't have to worry about that anymore. I mean, I still, I have to worry about cutting back a little bit. Um, but now I can pretty much, we can go on like any route that we wanted to explore. And that's what we've been really been doing is exploring. So, I'll link a couple of videos. The first time we explored was from Danbury to Reading. Whoa. And how we <laughs> were able to ride to Reading from our house uh, and Reading was one of the few places that we rode to we would drive to and ride around because it was uh, more cycling friendly um, so we decided to ride there and that was it was not a good experience because it was on a Friday and now we know Fridays are not a good day to to ride through Fairfield County. Because it was so busy. And I also think that it was the timing of it. Uh, the governor started to reopen 
decide to do this phase, I think one or two reopening. And uh, I can't remember. I felt like, you know, this whole pandemic, everybody's so careful, which you should be. You know, I, as a science teacher, can totally see the importance of following these guidelines when when it comes to uh, I'm going to make a left turn here these viral pathogens that obviously have killed hundreds and thousands of people all over the world So I guess I'm trying to try to get a PR on this. I'm gonna stop talking for now. See if I can uh, get a PR on this. Oh wait. Never mind. I take that back. I thought I had the segment starred, but I guess I didn't. So I guess I'll just assume I'm just going to keep uh, pedaling. You guys can also follow along.
All right, downhill after this. To the right is a road called Cozier Hill. Super steep climb. Like 11 or 12% average grade Ooh. and half a mile long the only problem is it's windy so it might not be a good Everesting segment to ride up and down on. I am definitely not doing any Everesting at all. So, freewheeling here. You guys can <laughs> take a break. That was fun. So we are in the town of Sherman right now.
and we're gonna go into a little bit into New York. of uh, in Connecticut are are uh, very small so it's not unusual to ride through multiple different towns in one ride So we have about a mile or two into the next climb. And what I'll do here is I'm going to stop recording and then start it at the start of the climb. So that way to save battery. Oops. Morning. So or I see a silo up ahead and that's the farm that that's the road that we turn into and that's usually the landmark is the silo. So this is the Tabor Road climb coming up. Uh, I will be making a left turn. The problem is sometimes people in their Batmobiles get a little cocky but I won't blame them because I guess they're trying to pass me going 13 miles an hour <laughs> I'm sure the Porsche can go faster than that. So you can see up ahead, there's a car, a white car. Uh, well, this looks like a busy road. I hear a car coming behind me. Maybe not.
I'm going to make sure I, I use my hand signals. Here's the climb. Way to go.
All right, so we're in New York now. Dutchess County, New York. I think there's one more climb or one more part of the climb. This is kind of the recovery part.
So it's dirt roads from here. Oh, that was hard. All right, I'm gonna pause here again, guys. I'm gonna stop and get something to eat. Oh. All right, we are back ah, on the bike. So this road will turn into dirt in a few seconds. So brace yourself for some bumpy semi downhill ride. So I just had a banana. Washed it down with the electrolyte drink. Morning. Uh, I usually like to bring a banana in case. So that climb, I'm not sure if I even PR'd it. Uh, I don't know what happened to the segment screen, but it turned off on me. So I wasn't able to, whoa, figure out whether or not I PR'd it. Um, but usually if that turns off, that usually means I didn't PR it, which is a bummer. Here's a dirt road. Oh, this house on the left is nice. So we got to go slow down in this dirt road because... It's downhill. And I remembered when I came down here with Jason at one point and he has rim brakes on his bike and he was not into the whole downhill dirt thing. Even though he has, he actually has gravel tires on his, just the, um, uh, it's the Panerasa Gravel Kings, uh, the 28 millimeter one. So it's not a substantial amount of tread in there, but it's a lot more tread than what I have in my uh, GP 5000s, which didn't come stock with the bike, by the way. Uh, the Canyon Ultimate, the women's 
Canyon Ultimate Disc Brake 8.0 uh, comes with the Schwabi uh, Tubeless Easy 25 millimeters. And so I don't like riding 25 millimeter tires because, while well, you get roads like this, it's like mixed terrain up in this part of Connecticut where you have sometimes smooth roads and then turns into dirt roads. So this is actually not bad of a dirt road. It's a little more gravelly. There's definitely a lot of loose rocks here, so you gotta be careful. Um, but you don't really need substantial treads on your, oops, car back, on your tire. I like this area because there's a nice horse farm up there. A couple of horse farms around here. Or equestrian stables, they call it. Um, so anyway, yeah, you don't really need heavy duty treads on these types of roads um, unless you, well, it probably would be helpful going uphill because this is a, kind of a decent uphill gravel climb. And I don't know if ne these tires uh, are going to be able to handle it. I guess if you stay seated all the way up, you could make it up without slipping around. Um, so anyway, yeah, you don't really need substantial gravel tires uh, like or like the mountain bike treads in your tires around this part of Connecticut because a lot of these roads are not are dirt roads and they're meant for for cars to go through. They're not really trails. Uh, they're not like single mount single track mountain biking trails. So you can definitely get away with road tires, but I prefer 28 millimeters because it's a nice little bit of cushion for the bumps because it's not just dirt roads. You also get, and somebody made a comment, left a comment on one of my the videos about how Fairfield County has all these potholes and it's true. We get a lot of potholes. This isn't, you know, this is Dutchess County, New York, but you get the idea. So there's a short uphill. It looks pretty steep. I remember when I first saw it, I was uh, half kind of freaking out because of how steep it looks, but it's not terrible. Oh. Once you go on these roads, uh, once you climb them, it's actually pretty doable. You know, once you're in the middle of the, the climb, it looks so scary just from looking at it straight because it looks like a vertical climb, <laughs> but it's saying eight and a half percent so I'm gonna granny gear this one
so where was I so um, let me talk about what I brought for fueling today uh, I brought a banana uh, two cliff bars uh, maybe a two ounce gel um, from First Endurance. It's the vanilla flavored one. I call it vanilla frosting. Uh, and I believe two or three goo gels. I am going to stop to refuel after the Bulls Bridge climb, um, which I don't think I'll be doing uh, I don't think I'll be doing a PR and attempting a PR on that one and there's this super steep climb towards the end so we are 26 miles in so we're almost halfway into our ride and I just want to save my legs, make sure I recover enough for that last part. Um, North Mountain Road is really steep. Not as steep as uh, Cozier Hill, but it's a half mile long, about 9% average grade, and It's not just, I mean, it's not as steep as what, as cozier, but the problem, the tricky thing about that is, is it has this like almost 90 degree turn and it's going uphill and it's turning to the right. And so here um, we drive on our right side. And so you can't really go onto the other side of the road to take the more shallower um, approach to the climb so you have to take the steep part of it and so you really got to use some muscle to get up that steep little bit and I struggled to climb it last time and I I actually slowed down because Jason unfortunately uh, wasn't gearing didn't gear down enough and so he got stuck and he wasn't able to unclip on time and fell. And so I was going to turn around to see if he's okay. But he told me, you know, thank God for these helmets, the Senna helmets that you can, you know, intercom, communicate with each other that way. And uh, he said I could just keep going. And so I did. Um, but I did slow down quite a bit. And I checked on Strava. I checked about Strava to see like what the standings are because I know that there was a segment for that and there there is and okay. I gotta stop talking here because I gotta make a left turn I'll make sure that Everything is clear. Oh, I didn't gear down. Oh boy. Didn't gear down. I always do that. Uh, okay, so I did. Okay, uh, so. So I stopped and check to see if Jason was okay. Or no, I didn't stop, I slowed down. And he told me to just keep going. So I did, but it was kind of hard to get my momentum back. Checked Strava to see how I did in the segment. And there was one other woman who did it. And they were like, a total of like over 50 people who attempted it. 
myself and the other woman were the only two women who attempted it. And uh, so I was surprised that I actually got the QOM on it because I didn't really feel like I was uh, full gas on it. But it's just hard because that's toward the end of the climb or the, the end of the ride. And, you know, by that time, I'm like so ready. Legs are trashed from all the, the climbing. So we'll see today. Uh, I'm kind of dreading doing it, but the other climb is Elbow Hill, and I almost got the QOM on that one. That's another, so that's also windy. So you either choose to go up North Mountain or Elbow Hill, and it doesn't matter which one you choose. I think Elbow Hill might be a little easier because the turn is actually left. There's a, it's called Elbow Hill because it has that kind of elbow turn, but it turns to the left. And so you can take the shallow part of the road and go up that way. The only downside is it might be slightly longer. All right. it was gonna stop you're just going really slow so we yeah that's my predicament right now is bring out figuring out what climb I want to do Oh, the breeze is so nice.
Oh boy. Headwind. I always find it, um, and people have different views on this, but how people don't wear their helmets when they're riding a bike on the road. And it's like, my the rationale behind it for me is there's nothing really protecting you but the helmet, you know, from cars and they, if cars aren't, you know, if dr drivers aren't paying attention to where they're going and what they're doing, nothing protecting you but the helmet, some people choose not to wear it. Even if you're going like five miles an hour, can still wear a helmet.
You can tell we're in Connecticut now because of all the potholes. It's funny because it, I forgot to point this out, but earlier you could see the line, <laughs> the state line, because it's marked by paved and smoothly paved roads versus this road, potholes everywhere. Gosh, this road is terrible. So this is Kent now. Uh, th this leads us to uh, one of the trailheads to the Appalachian Trail. So on the left, there's a trailhead there and you'll see, uh, we're not turning left, we're going straight. So on the left there, that's Scattercook. And we're gonna go straight and up Bulls Bridge Road in a minute. So this is the, that area is Bulls Bridge. Potholes everywhere. I guess it forces people to slow down. You're a motorist. So yeah, here on the right where you see the stop sign, that's the Bulls Bridge Trailhead. And the Housatonic River, this is the bridge. I'm going to go under a bridge, a covered bridge. Go through that stop sign, stop light. Sometimes I just go through it. It's going to take forever to turn red, uh, to turn green. So at the top of this, or I mean at the bottom, I'm going to stop and refuel again. I'm going to take a, force myself to take a cliff bar. thing with this climb is that okay well it looks like the sun is covering the road but I used to not like this climb because it was like you're exposed to sun but today's a good day to get a PR on it
I think I PR'd it. Oh. Oh, it doesn't say. Ah. That feels good. It said I was behind 28, 30 seconds behind my previous time. So, but usually it'll say PR. This time it didn't. Uh, oh well. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna coast down here, guys, and then what I'm gonna do is stop, refuel again. You can pause it. Uh, once I stop, don't pause it yet. And then you can get up and do, you know, get something to drink, uh, whatever. I'm gonna stop in front of the, uh, a, the South Kent School. So you see the rock wall there, I want to stop, where you see the crossing sign, uh, and then the field. So we'll stop here, and then, uh, let's see, where can, okay. yeah, we'll stop here. So, go ahead and pause the, you can go ahead and hit the pause button and you can go to the bathroom or what you need, whatever you need to do, and then hit the pause button again to resume. So, see you in a bit. All right, we are uh, going to head out. If you guys want to know how long I spent there, um, I took like a five minute or so break. So I, I'm just so used to stopping uh, during my, uh, before, or I, I'm so used to stopping to eat because, I don't know, it's just, it's just nice to get off the saddle once in a while uh, to kind of stretch your your legs and your back a little bit give your your bum a break from all the uh, you know bumps that you go through when you're riding the road or the dirt so speaking of bums <laughs> I uh, mentioned last time, a couple of rides ago, how I had really bad chafing, or somebody corrected me, it's not chafing, it's chafing. Okay, whatever. Motto tomato. Anyway, so I had really bad chafing and uh, didn't know what the, the root of the problem was. Oh, they paved. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> they paved this road. Nice. It's about time. This road was so bumpy. <coughs> so I had such bad chafing, hot spots. 
on uh, my shorts that I also got a tear on the same spot that I had the shaping on. So that kind of indicated to me that <clears throat> oh, I think I drank too much. Um, indicated to me that I must be, I don't know, on that area, maybe I'm sitting more into my, leaning more to my right. So I did a few things. <clears throat> I was so upset that those shorts tore because I always complain about how cycling apparel is expensive and oh bump look at this road it's so smooth finally so I always complain about how cycling apparel is so expensive and I was so upset because I, w <clears throat> I had these gore bib shorts that I purchased um, you know they were a hundred dollars a little over a hundred was the zippered um, side so that you can just unzip and use the bathroom this is for women by the way and uh, I really like that so I got it and a month later I wore it this was a couple of weeks actually ago but that was a month later than before after I purchased it and <clears throat> I, I wore it for the sub threshold workout that I did up at Skiff Mountain um, and I'll link that workout up here it was my workout and Jason's workout um, so we did basically a 2 by 25 minutes at sub threshold <clears throat> and it wasn't I haven't I hadn't even started the workout and I was doing the warm-ups doing sprints up and down the road and noticed something was rubbing up against my inner thigh and I just happened to and it was the same <clears throat> kind of feeling that I had with my Rafa shorts uh, I felt the same thing like there was like a pull in my skin and so I just happened to touch that area and notice there was my skin exposed <laughs> so that was annoying and uh, you know I was frustrated because again I can't stress this enough cycling apparel is expensive so fast forward to last week I found out about this company called Black Bibs, which I'm wearing right now. And they had the highest end bib shorts that they had rated for, the chamois was rated for eight plus hours or eight hours on the saddle. So I got that, it was $80. Actually, I got two of them. <clears throat> and from the reviews, that I read, oh, I'll make a left turn here in a minute. From the reviews I read, I heard that it was, uh, they were really good. They were a really good brand. Um, and they can charge that amount because they don't have, they're not branded by any, there's no branding or logo on them. <clears throat> so, I don't really care, you know, if I had whatever logo, because apparently I've worn a ton of branded logos and hi.
and uh, <clears throat> they obviously it doesn't really matter what brand logo you wear they all pretty much come from the I think most of them come from the same um, company that makes them in Italy and you're just paying for the name <clears throat> so that's what I'm wearing right now and they're so far really comfortable uh, Obviously, this is going to be like a five-hour ride. Um, it's I'm in two. I'm in almost three hours. Morning. Morning. So, so far they are been really good. I don't feel any rubbing. And I also switched out my saddle. Um, <clears throat> so that might have also helped switching out the saddle. Um, Canyon saddle came uh, uh, the Canyon bike came with the I think Cell San Marco is the brand uh, not a big fan of it um, I think it might be the the seat texture the saddle texture or material that they used on the saddle that was giving me some problems and it was like as if the saddle was tilted as if to force you to go in a more aggressive position, um, which is fine, but I think that was what's causing the chafing. So new saddle, I have the, well, actually, <laughs> I, the, the, this isn't really new. I mean, it's new because I haven't really used it, but um, this is the WTB Vault saddle. And the reason why I had this sitting around is because I bought a pair because I love them so much, my, my previous bike. And uh, Amazon accidentally sent me another batch. Like they sent me a double order and so I decided, whatever, I'll just keep this one in case I do need it. And then I did need it um, because I switched out the saddle on the biker, you know, the indoor trainer that we use to ride Zwift. So we switched, that, we switched out that saddle. And uh, so, yeah, now this turned out to be, you know, between the saddle and the new bib shorts, hopefully these to will stay intact for multiple wash and wear. And I figured it would be good. I mean, it's not, I'm not spending a whole lot of money on bib shorts uh, because it's just gonna get, it seems as though <clears throat> it's, it's gonna, um, with the wear and tear and everything, my left <laughs> so this is River Road we're in New Milford now and River Road is a dirt road and really nice road because it depends on whether or not <laughs> it did rain a lot last night so it could be bumpy uh, and I use it's a nice flat road uh, dirt road 
the ride through and it's quiet. Otherwise, I'd be taking the um, Route 7, which is a lot more traffic, and I don't want to deal with traffic. Like, come on. So that this one lines uh, this road hugs the perimeter of the Housatonic River. A really nice scenic road. A lot of people use it to run in. Um, this and Scattercook Road. And then what I'm going to do here, guys, is I am going to stop at the top of, at the end of the, uh, of this road. Uh, and then refuel again. And the next part of the road is, the next part of the route that we're taking is new to me. Uh, we're going to go through New Milford. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. <clears throat> so yeah, I like this road because it's quiet and it's tree covered. The only downside with tree covered is that you get also, oh, what is this? Oh, it's just garbage. <laughs> um, tree covered near the water means mosquitoes and gnats. Whoa. People are here fishing, uh, canoeing, kayaking. Actually, there was a, something in the news recently, maybe uh, last month, a guy drowned. This Housatonic River is sometimes calm like today. I'm surprised it's calm today because we just had torrential downpour last night. Um, but. It depends on how many days we have rain and uh, sometimes the water can be moving pretty fast and it's pretty rocky and they have signs all over the place to be careful swimming on high currents and people do it anyway but we've had a lot of uh, an influx of New Yorkers come to Connecticut uh, because of the pandemic that's going on in the city. Hi. And people who uh, 
could afford to leave New York City and rent a house here, moving to Connecticut, or moving to Connecticut. And I'm not sure if that's permanent. Uh, so we've had a lot of, now I don't know about th those individuals that came here um, to swim. They're from New York, but I'm not sure if they just came to visit family uh, or have been swimming in the Housatonic River every year. And it just so happened the current was strong that uh, it took, I think, two of them, one or two people. I think they recovered the body of one. And they weren't able to, I don't think they were able to recover the body of the other person. So really sad. Um, you know, it looks deceiving. To uh, the eye, the water looks so calm, but the currents do pick up. And it depends on where you are. That's why they have a hydroelectric station here. Take advantage of the energy that water, the force of water, creates. So um, I'm going to eat. Ooh, bum. I'm probably going to take another cliff bar because I feel like I can take it. I remembered when I used to first run through this trail, I used to be scared of it. Didn't know like who was gonna pop out of nowhere and So I think that dog's name is Hamlet. <laughs> he, uh, I've seen that guy walk his dog. He must live around here. That's how often we, uh, we ride through this area. But yeah, I used to be scared of riding through this road. You know, it's tree covered, wooded area. And I was afraid of bears. But when I was running, I'd be afraid because I knew that I wasn't fast enough to run, run from a bear. And they said, you're not supposed to run from a bear. But if I were to see one now, it'd be pretty scary. I mean, I don't, I think I could uh, outrun a, or outbike a bear now. Let me tell you something, I love this breeze. It's actually not as humid as I thought it was going to be, at least not under the shade. Oh, I think I know her. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Oh, 
in person. Yeah, so they have signs now that says New Milford residents only. I guess when you're riding or when you're swimming, you want to swim. So at the end of this road, there's a steep climb, dirt climb, and then of course there are potholes. I'm gonna stop here under the tree cover and then
So uh, feel free to take a break again. We are in the three hour mark, um, or I am in the three hour mark. But yeah, take a break um, and then pause this video and then um, resume it when you're ready. So there's this uh, group of motorcyclists that just rode past me and I think they have like a, this loud intercom that I just heard someone say, okay, we got pavement. Okay, so we're back on the bike. And bad news, oh my, I don't know what happened, but my shorts tore again. Same place. Oh, awesome. Oh, and I don't have any chafing at all. I was spoke too soon, I guess. Maybe my my inner thigh needs to lose weight. What a nice day today. I just got word from Jason. I've been texting him every after every stop, or at every stop, I mean. And uh, he's riding indoors. He's doing the pretzel loop or the pretzel route on Zwift. At first, I thought it was the Uber pretzel which is the 74 mile one. <sighs> now he's doing the regular pretzel, <laughs> which is the 44 or 40 mile one with 4,400 free to climbing. Oh, it smells nice. So hope you guys are still doing okay. I know I kind of took you on a long one. Would like to know how, what you think about this kind of video. and uh, would like your feedback on it. I don't know if I ever said anything, or mentioned why or how I thought of this. It's because I wanted Jason to experience riding outdoors with me. And so this was the best way I could come up with that would kind of allow him to experience these roads. Of course, he lucked out because he doesn't have to do all, he, to, he doesn't have to ride through all these potholes.
Oh. Okay, left turn. Hi. How are you? Good. Everybody's watching what's going on over there. There were a bunch of cops. So this is the quarry. On the left. I've never ridden through these roads before. I've actually dri I've driven through it. But not ridden through it. This area, this section is supposed to be flat. Uh, of course, I always try to somehow I map these routes out with extra climbing, so we'll see. You know, somebody was teaching their dog some defense training there. Interesting. practice is on lots of people watching I guess that's on the left you saw there that's the maybe the umpires so outdoor Our games are on. Our cyclists are fun. I feel like they're one with the cyclists. Kind of. Hope you guys are still feeling good. Where the hell am I going? Oops. Going this way. I don't know what that road is on the right. Hydroelectric station on the right. Can't see it from the camera, but it's there. Water's pretty low today. All right, we gotta.
So guys, I think what I'm going to do is pause or stop the camera just to save on battery and storage since I only brought one memory card with me today. So I'm just going to stop it here for now. And then you, you can still continue riding. You'll see the scenery switch. I don't know why I stopped it. I felt like I should just keep recording. I'll just continue it. This is a new route. I don't want to chance that. I'm going straight.
Did I make the wrong turn? Oh well. This will lead me to where I need to go anyway. people oh man got a little headwind there All right, guys, uh, nice and quiet road here. I love this road because it's flat. So it's a great road to recover on. So I think we still have about two or three miles left before the, um, North Mountain Climb, uh, about 10 more miles until home. But I'm not going to keep the camera on all the way home. I'll probably end this early, but I want to get a recording of that um, North Mountain Road just so you have a nice oomph Too bad it's a uh, headwind right now. Jason and I rode through this road uh, a couple weeks ago and it was super foggy. Couldn't see anything. So we had to, well, we, we came from the opposite direction. Oh. 
Okay, so this will take us to Brookfield. Cross 202. Up North Mountain Road. And head on home. pause you. I'm going to stop the recording. Mountain Road. Super nervous.
Oh God. Well, I will uh, leave the total ride miles and time after I finish this ride. I still have about six or seven more miles left until home. So just take this time to cool down. I'm going to turn off the camera in a few minutes, but you're just going to cool down and Take this time to cool down uh, and all that. So, thanks for joining me, guys. Oh, that was a crazy ride. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully, just leave a comment down below if you like this. If you didn't, what can I do to improve it? Um, and so on. Well, hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.